Some Democratic states are ditching mask mandates, and Republicans think the timing is mm -hmm. all too convenient. A recent poll showing Americans are tired of COVID, and those midterm elections are right around the corner. Veterans Affairs Committee member, Congressman Matt Rosendale, joins us. Congressman Rosendale, thank you so much for being on our program. Why did it take polling Morning. and not the plight of the American people to change these Democrats' minds? Because that's the only thing they make their decisions directed by, uh, Todd. Uh, unfortunately, they check the winds of change. They go out and spend uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars on polling. They decide where they want to be, and that's what they uh, base all their decisions on. We've seen that time and time again. Meanwhile, we've got parents that are screaming for their children to be able to go to school without these mandates. We've got businesses that are being shut down and forced to try and find additional uh, people to work for them at a time when the labor shortage is is terrible, and everyone is, is tired of all these mandates. Congressman, you have introduced a bill that would block military assistance to Ukraine until our southern border is secured. Uh, tell us about this legislation and the logic behind it. It is far past time that American foreign affairs decisions are uh, serving the people across our nation. Uh, right now, we've got a southern border that is wide open, and it's because of the uh, decisions that have been made by this administration. We saw it under the Trump administration, we were able to secure our border. And why would we engage ourselves in a border dispute thousands of miles away in Eastern Europe when we can't uh, control our own southern border? So simply, this legislation says that until such time that we have operational control of the southern border, until such time that we have completed the border border wall system, including the uh, wall and the monitoring technology that goes along with it and the roadways to allow our Border Patrol agents to uh, tr uh, travel up and uh, down the uh, entire border, then we will not be sending money overseas. We will, n will not spill American blood or spend American treasure overseas until we have operational control of our southern border. Yeah, Congressman, when I speak to people over the course of the last few weeks, this point that you are trying to make is top of mind. It's the number one thing people are talking about, to me at least. Not even the economy, not even inflation, not even crime, but this concept of why are we securing somebody else's border and not ours? Why doesn't this administration get that? I think that they're trying to use this as a, uh, a ploy to change the demographics of our country, quite simply, and, and they are doing so at the exact same time. I mean, we're talking about 100,000 Russian troops being amassed somewhere that no one can even point to on a map. And meanwhile, we've lost 100,000 people to fentanyl overdoses in our country in the last year. So we're, we're worried about other places, other borders, and our own people are dying. I've gone down to the southern border. Uh, as you well know, Montana shares hundreds, five, six 600 miles of a uh, border with Canada, and I've gone up there and I see the problems that we have with keeping it closed down. Meanwhile, we have a southern border that is wide open. People are streaming them across. We've got problems with human trafficking. We've got problems with drug smuggling coming mm -hmm. across there. Our people are dying, and it's causing problems across the entire nation. You are absolutely right about that. You know, Congressman, a lot of your Republican colleagues think that the Biden administration should have done more and acted sooner to help Ukraine. Um, so I think that those people would say that these two issues are both equally important or both important and they shouldn't be linked. What would you say to that? I would say that there's decisions that have been made over the last year that have weakened our standing around the globe. And yet you can't uh, involve America in a conflict and think that that's going to put China back in a box. We have weakened our uh, policies. Uh, against Iran. We've weakened our policies against North Korea. We've allowed China to expand its operations around the world. And you can't take one incident and think that it's going to turn all of this around. We strengthened Russia by lifting the sanctions on the Nord Stream 2. Meanwhile, we have all this energy that we can produce right here to help our allies over in Europe. And, yeah. and we're not doing it. Including That's in your great there. state of Montana. I was just up there over yeah. the weekend. Sure Saw was. a lot of production Todd of tells oil me it's right cold there. in Montana. Right Very now. cold there, uh, <laughs> Congressman, and uh, but good beef. So we're going to have a story on that coming up in the next few days. Lots we of good beef. Lots of good beef. We appreciate your time this morning, sir. Lots of good Thank beef. You. Thank you. Thanks, Congressman. Thanks, Carly. All right.